Hey hackers, welcome back to Hack Warehouse TV, a great show for InfoSec neighbors. I'm your host Troy Brown and we're at DEF CON 25 and we're going live with two of our favorite people from one of our favorite companies, Mike Osmond and Dominic Spill of Great Scott Gadgets. So it's great to have you guys here at the show with us. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So our first question is probably the most serious question uh, that we ask everybody and it's really how important do you think is the cyber? We're just kidding. What's the status of your latest projects? Can you just roll through like Great Fet? Sure. Starting with Great Fet. Yeah. So yeah. Great Fet is a uh, is a general purpose hardware packing platform. It's it's kind of the next generation of Travis Goodspeed's Good Fet project, uh, which I purchased from him a couple of years ago here in Vegas for five dollars. Uh, so we own Good Fet and we're replacing it with Great Fet. Uh, Great Fet is uh, is a much much uh, more capable, a higher performance kind of general purpose hardware hacking platform, and we're going to be shipping those things pretty soon this this year. And for now, we're doing a lot of software development. The hardware's been stabilized for a while, and we're doing a lot of interesting software development, getting new functions, and also designing some new add-on boards for it. Awesome! So you're making Good Fet great again. That's exactly I what we're doing. I saw those hats. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, those hats. <laughs> and you said you had another project, Spectre Monitor, uh, Opera Cake, you call it? Yeah, so we've been uh, performing some uh, research to do with like wideband spectrum monitoring, uh, implementing new firmware for HackRF to allow us to view the complete range of, of its supported frequency range, so from zero up to six gigahertz, and kind of get a, spe a picture of what's going on in the spectrum. And in addition to that, Mike designed a board called Opera Cake, which allows us to switch antennas ah. uh, and get a better view of what that spectrum is. And we can also do other fun things, like try and do direction finding and things like this. And it's an, it's an add-on board for HackRF, so it works in, in cahoots with the radio to allow us to, to switch antennas in real time and, and things like that. That's amazing, because we did a tradecraft on the zero to six gigahertz uh, improvement, and that was one of the things I was switching out antennas. So Opera Cake, huh? Yeah, right. Opera Cake's going to be the board that lets you do it. That's yeah. super cool. And then you had Neapolitan. What's that? Neapolitan is a is another add-on board for Hacker F1 that's in development right now, okay. and uh, it it's a full duplex add-on. So Hacker F1 is a by default is a half duplex transceiver. So you can transmit, you can receive, but you can't do both at the same time. Okay. And the Neapolitan add-on just adds another radio to it. So you have a single HackRF with a single USB interface and a single microcontroller controlling two radios, and it gives you the opportunity to, to have full duplex radio operation. Okay, and what were the, some of the limitations where you needed that? Like, were there certain things you couldn't do because it wasn't full duplex? Honestly, there aren't that many applications that require full duplex, but by far the most popular one that I see people doing is implementing cellular base stations. If you want to actually have a cellular base station, or for that matter, a mobile station, and be able to fully implement a protocol, then you're going to need a full duplex platform. Also, having full duplex can be useful in certain scenarios where you don't truly need full duplex, but you just need to rapidly switch from receive to transmit and do it with a in a tightly synchronized way, okay. with you know with with tight timing constraints. Uh, or, for example, if you need to switch frequency very, very rapidly, you could actually have uh, you can have one of them like tuned already to a different frequency, one of the radio sections, and so you have like two different radio sections tuned to different frequencies, and you can just rapidly switch from one to the other instead of having to take the time to, to tune one of the radios to a new frequency. So my dream of a full duplex ham radio transceiver using the Hack RF is about to come true. It sounds like. It's getting More closer. or less, it's getting closer, yeah. uh, but you, but it's still going to be limited in its output power and so forth. Okay. So at Hacker Warehouse, we're proud to sell all of your devices, but we have noticed this upcropping of all these clones. Can you just give us uh, an overview of why it's why it's better to get the real product rather than clones? Sure. Well, everything we do is open source hardware, so we encourage people to build their own versions of our things or modify our things and do awesome new projects built out of our designs. Uh, but sometimes there are folks in the world who, who just copy our designs and don't actually contribute anything back to the community and just sell them online. And uh, for the most part, those things work just fine, but if people buy them, then they're not supporting the people who are actually designing those products and who are supporting those products and are giving you updates, firmware updates and so forth. 
Uh, so we hope that there are enough people in the world who, who want to support us and the open source projects that we do, and so far that's working out. Yeah, so what inspires you to keep doing the research that you're doing and just keep going and making things better? I, I think one of the things that, uh, that comes out every time Mike reads a, a blog post about a new chip that comes out, he suddenly thinks, how can I put that into a piece of hardware? And then a piece of hardware lands on my desk and, and I try and write some firmware for it. So the new products sometimes come from that angle, and the other research comes from trying to just push the boundaries of what our existing products do. So the sweet mode in HackRF, for example, was, was something we'd theorized about, and we worked with a, a guy called Mike Walters out of Scotland, who, who really tried, like, was very keen to push that, uh, that envelope and see what we could achieve from the radio. And so the research comes from that. Is there any research that you would prefer people start looking at? Like you have all these new products, are there things you want people to start doing or researching on so that eventually you get other features out there? Well, uh, we're always looking for kind of new frontiers. For example, Dominic and I have been doing a lot of research into infrared communication systems lately and trying, we have an add on board uh, that's in development right now but is fairly functional uh, for GreatFet. And so you put this add on board, we call add on boards neighbors. Uh, so you have this neighbor, this infrared neighbor, and it's kind of a software defined radio approach to infrared hacking. Okay. Transmitter receive kind of arbitrary infrared signals over fairly wide bandwidth. And we've found a whole bunch of interesting systems in the world that we didn't even know about before we started doing this research from very high, uh, high bandwidth systems like 32 channels of audio digitally encoded over a two to three megahertz carrier over infrared that we can uh, that we can interface with with this with this platform yeah. or down at the opposite end of the spectrum like just a few hertz infrared signals that are used to control traffic signal preemption systems no kidding yeah that's amazing any other things with your research you want to talk about and a lot of what's going on at the Great Sky Gadgets Lab uh, right now is that we have a lot of software projects going on, especially developing more software tools to go with, with GreatFet. So we want GreatFet to be kind of your, your software interface to the physical world. Yeah. And we're trying to find better ways to, and easier ways for people to be able to interact with other hardware, with the physical world, through software. Okay. Well, let's talk about DEF CON a little bit. So DEF CON's 25 year anniversary. Uh, what's, what's your favorite part about DEF CON? I think it's the people. Uh, there's so much going on and everyone seems to self-organize and, and all the villages come together. There are different people presenting the things they're passionate about. There are a lot of people who are here. You know, some people paid to be here, some people are here voluntarily, but a lot of them are, are just really passionate about what they do. Like They come out to Vegas for, for four days in the middle of the summer uh, and you've got to be pretty passionate about what you do and it's really fun to see that uh, no matter what they're doing. Yeah, yeah and I think for me, I, uh, I definitely agree, but I, I think that the, the thing that stands out to me about DEF CON is how many different activities there are. And I always tell people who are new to DEF CON, like don't try to do everything, or don't try to, try, don't try to go to every talk, like find a few things that interest you and, and run with those. And maybe that thing is a contest, and you might spend your entire weekend working on a contest, but if you have a good time and you learn something and you meet some people, great. That's great. Uh, that's good advice for new people coming to it, and completely agree. Um, if you guys have, this is an interesting question, but do you have any general rules in hacking? Like, whenever you go and sit down, like, do you have one thing you always do? Just, like that? just be curious. Yeah. Just be curious, curious about the world that's around you. That's, that's yeah. why we make the tools we do. Like, I think someone recently described them as, as sort of software, software APIs for the physical world. Oh, yeah. and, and that's like exactly what we want to do. We want to be able to go look at radio and probe what radio is out there or, or probe the, a circuit board that's sat in front of you. And that's why we make the tools we do and why we're interested in things we're interested in. That's good yes. advice. You heard it. Be curious. So you guys have been in this industry for a while now, right? About how long? About 10 years. About 10 years doing it? Yeah more than that. So there's some people out here that are just now starting. And so if you were to go back in time and talk to yourself or maybe talk to them, what's some advice you might give them? Well, I think one thing I would tell a younger version of myself is start going to hacker cons. I, I honestly didn't find the hacker community and start, and start participating and being an active, involved member of the hacker community until long after I had been in the industry. 
for a while. And it's so much more rewarding and so much more fun to be getting to know friends in the hacker community that, uh, you know, I, friends are all around the world that I didn't know I had before. And I think, I think that that's something that people miss. I think a lot of, the, the community is full of people who have, at, at some point in their life, and maybe now, they feel like they're the only weird person on earth. But there's a whole lot of us weirdos, and we like hanging out and doing cool things together. Yeah. How about you? If you went back in time, would you tell yeah. yourself something different? I think the hacker cons are a great, a great tip. And it doesn't have to be DEF CON. Like, I should have uh, joined a makerspace or mm -hmm. found a local B-Sides event or something if they'd existed at the time. Anything, just meet up with other people, because mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity to share ideas. And, and that's how you learn. So you learn when you first get into the industry, and it's how I'm still learning now. Yeah, and I think it's a good point about you think you're the only one, you come here and find out you're one of many. Yeah. 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 Mike, Dominic, thanks again for taking the time to talk to us today. Uh, are there websites out there where people can read about your research? Yes, yeah, greatscottgadgets.com is a great place to go. And also following the two of us on Twitter is a, is a good way to stay up to date with what we're doing. All right, well, we have links to all of that and more in the description below. If Mike and Dominic's gadgets have you saying, Great Scott, be sure to tell us in the comments, give us a like, or even share this video. Once again, this is Troy with Hacker Warehouse TV, and until next time, remember, keep it between the laws. Thanks so much, guys.